Uh, but today, I want to talk about opportunity. So what is opportunity? It's a culmination of time and place that gives us a chance to improve our lives, the lives of those around us, and the world as a whole. So, you know, I started my education in elementary school like everyone else. I was a pretty scrubby kid for the most part. Um, and then I got to fourth grade and I really started to get involved. My fourth grade teacher was very active. Uh, his lessons were interactive. He was very adamant about all of his students participating in things like the science fair. Um, and that's when I really became interested in learning. You know, that's when I was officially deemed teacher's pet. Uh, and, you know, most people might find that insulting, but I took it as an honor. Um, so, you know, I very much was the teacher's pet. I was very involved. Um, so opportunity is all around us in that sense, you know. In a high school anywhere, we're really presented with a lot of opportunities, chances to do some amazing things. But countless of my peers and, you know, everyone really just sits back and, you know, doesn't want to get involved. You know, why should I try in school when I can go home and binge watch Netflix? Um, and, you know, I don't blame you if you want to do that, too. Um, so there's a disconnect between the short term and the long term. But when I, I first realized that opportunity and, you know, working hard really does pay off was about a year ago. I was sitting at a Pirates game in box seats, this nice slice of cheesecake in front of me, just watching the game go on. And I realized, you know, I'm sitting here with all this free food, amazing seats for free, because I've worked hard to get here to be a part of this program that's put me here. And, you know, that's just, it's life changing when you realize, you know, the, all of your hard work pays off. Um, so that takes me up to, you know, this year. Uh, English class at the beginning of the year, we're reading poetry, talking about the themes, analyzing them, things like that. Um, and the biggest theme that we hit right off the bat was Carpe Diem, Seize the Day. You know, we talked about it, we watched the Dead Poet Society clip too. And, you know, the meaning of carpe diem is not YOLO. You know, and the meaning of YOLO and carpe diem is often misinterpreted. Um, you know, YOLO is viewed as, you know, live every day like it's your last, so let's just go out, have fun, and party. But that's not what it should be. It should be looking at the long term. You know, I have one life to live, let's make this meaningful. So why is it that we don't get that? Again, it's the short versus long term. Um, and we really need to consciously think about that. We may know the importance of opportunity actively, but we need to be thinking about that passively. You know, whenever opportunity arises, we need to reach out and grab it. Frank Underwood once said, you are entitled to nothing. I won't spoil House of Cards any more than that, but he's absolutely right. We live in a great era where knowledge, opportunity is right in front of us, but we have to actively reach out and grab it. So why is it that, you know, Students don't want to pay attention to your lessons because they're more involved on Twitter. So we need to attack this from both ends. As students and individuals, we need to be more willing to get involved, to pay attention, to value learning. As teachers, we need to realize that you know, classroom learning, we can get any day, anywhere. The real learning happens in the real world. You know, why should students be solving problems on paper when they can be solving real-world problems for real people right now? And there are high school students that are doing that, but why can't all of them be doing that? So as teachers, administrators, we need to provide meaningful opportunities to students. As students, we need to realize the value of these opportunities and actively pursue them. And, you know, as elementary school kids, we can sort of shape these uh, children shape their values, shape their interests. But when it comes to high school, we have no part in that. If a student's not interested in math, you can't force them to be in math. So we need to provide opportunities that are meaningful to those individuals as well. We need to realize that you know, they may not be interested in something, but we need to make them value learning in another area. So on the whole, learning needs to come from these opportunities and not from sitting in a classroom. Um, to better ourselves, to better those around us, to better the future for those coming after us, we need to enhance the opportunities available. Um, as a professional, as a teacher, you know, there's still opportunities available to you. When your boss asks you for a simple favor, you know, it may seem burdensome. You, know, you don't want to do anything that's any more than your job description requires, but it may come, become pivotal, pivotal, pivotal when it comes time for promotion. 
um, you know, get involved in your alma mater with alumni programming or just volunteering in the community. And that goes for everyone. Uh, to improve ourselves, to learn more, to get new perspectives, new ideas, we need to be involved. So, you know, when you're walking through the hall and you see a poster for a new club, don't just say, oh, that's cool. Go to the meeting, you know, just get a taste of it. You may fall in love with it. And be committed to lifelong learning. Be involved always, not just now. Even when life's hectic, we need to be continually seeking out new things and taking advantage of them. So on the whole, my advice to you is carpe diem, seize the day. Thank you.